will prepare our heart. The hardened heart, the Lord will prepare. The stony heart, the Lord will make by his word. The wayward heart, the Lord will influence by his word. The worldly heart, the wandering heart, the Lord will prepare. Let's bring ourselves before the Lord. Any distraction, any wandering, anything that wants to take us away in thought or in imagination from the word of the Lord. We want the Lord to get rid of all those things and to prepare our heart to hear his word. God to prepare our heart. Confused heart, carnal heart, careless heart, no matter the state of our heart, we want to call upon the Lord and say, Lord, prepare our heart to receive your word. Prepare our heart to receive your word. The entrance of thy word, that your word, we have an entrance into our heart. We don't just want to come and your word does not influence us and your word does not get to our heart and we don't receive your word the way it ought to be. No matter the state of our heart, we are all here for this service. We want to ask the Lord, he will prepare our heart to receive his word. And as his word comes, the working of his word. We will want the Lord that his word will work in our life. There are people that have received the word, and the word worked in their life. The word worked in their soul. The word worked in them. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith to God's word is spread abroad, so that we need not to think anything. We say the working of the word in the life of the hearers here, they were transformed. We want to ask the Lord, starting from the side of the scripture, through songs, through the choir ministration, to the message by the man of God, we want the word of God to work redemption. The word of God will have the work of redemption in our life. The word of God will have the work of regeneration in our life. Bringing sinners to the Lord, bringing backsliders back to the Lord, that the word of God will work the work of regeneration. The word of God will work the work of transformation. The word of God will bring regeneration to all that are not saved, resulting in the work of repentance. We want to ask the Lord that as we hear his word this morning, as we listen to his word this morning, as we are taught his word this morning, the work of righteousness that the word does in our heart, in our life, in our being, the word of God will work the work of righteousness. The work of holiness in the life of the believer will be accomplished through the word, the wonders of the world. We want to experience this morning the wonder of the word of God. The word of God does wonder. The word of God will bring the wonder of holistic transformation. Holistic transformation. We will not come here and live here the way we have come. We have come to meet with the man of God. We have come to meet with the Lord. And the Lord will be speaking to us through the man of God. We want the wonders of the world bringing holistic transformation into our life. Making us to have the experience of transfiguration. That we have come here. We are living here better than we came. We are living here more refreshed than we came. As the word of God goes forth, as the word of God comes to us, we will experience the wonder of his touch. Through the word of God, there will be renewal. Through the word of God, there will be revival. Through the word of God, there will be strength in our lives, spiritually. There will be strength in all. Just the touch, or the second touch, in the life of Daniel, that gave him strength, that the touch through the word of God will come into our life, the waning in our spirit, the tiredness in us, the, 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 the things that ought not to be that are there, that have made us not to be as strong as we ought to be, the touch of his word, the wonder of his touch will bring strength into our life. The wonder of the world will take us and lead us to higher relationship. Higher relationship in prayer, 
I had relationship in obedience to the word of God. I had relationship in submission to the word of God. I had relationship in faith in the word of God. The wonder of the world will lead us to higher relationship, higher consecration, higher commitment, higher holiness, higher in holy living, higher in service. Let's commit ourselves to God and say, Lord, the touch of your word. In my soul this morning, the touch of your word. In my spirit this morning, the touch of your word. In my life this morning, I want to experience the wonder of the world. As the word comes, the wonder of transformation that takes place in the soul. The soul being reconciled, being drawn closer to God. That wonder will take place. The wonder we need. The touch we need, the transformation we need in our spirit, the experience we need in our life, in our inner man, better experience, greater experience, the Lord will grant to us as we come to this special worship service. We want to ask the Lord, the wonder of the Lord we walk in our families. We walk in our family. Families will experience the touch of the word of God. Will experience the transformation of the word of God. We want to see the wonder of the world in our congregation this morning. We want to see the wonder of the Lord of the world in our churches this morning. We want to see the wonder of the Lord across our nation and in all nations as the word of God is reaching out to them. We want to see God move in a special way. And as we come here this morning, we want to pray against any contrary influence, any contrary activity of the enemy, anything that want to act as distraction, that want to act as barrier, that want to make the word of God not to have entrance into our life, that want to make the word of God of non effect in our life, we want to ask the Lord, touch us this morning, Lord. Let your word bring contrition. Let your word bring conviction. Let your word bring transformation. Anything of the devil, of the agents of the devil, that we want to work against our receiving the best from the Lord in this service, in the whole of FCT, let's ask the Lord to remove all those activities of the enemy, to destroy all those work of the enemy, to silence all those oppressions and oppressions of the enemy. Our gathering is unto the Lord, and we are gathered to hear his word. We are gathered to receive his word. We are gathered to learn at his faith. We want to pray for the man of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Luke chapter 1, verse 2, even as he delivered them unto us, pray from the beginning where eyewitnesses and ministers of the world. The man of God, our Father in the Lord, is a witness of his word. We want to bring him before the Lord. The Lord will anoint him mightily this morning. Let's open our mouth and pray. The Lord will anoint him mightily this morning. The Lord will make him a minister, greater minister, able minister of the world. God will walk through him. The anointing of the Lord, the power of the Lord, the strength of the Lord, the enablement of the Lord, the ability of the Lord, the wisdom of the Lord, the Lord will bestow upon them. He is actually a man sent from God, and the same came for a weakness. He is bearing the weakness of the truth. Bearing the weakness of the word of God. We want to pray and say, Lord, let your hand be mighty. Let your hand be mighty. Let your mighty hand rest upon the man of God. Anoint him the more. Empower him the more. Strengthen him the more. Walk upon his life the more. You will do much more through him in this service in our life. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, 
who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. We want to have the Lord mighty anointing, greater anointing of the Holy Spirit with power upon the man of God, the presence of the Lord to be made manifest through him. He will come this morning with might, with utterance from the law, with war from the law, with ocean from the law. He will speak the word of God with authority, with boldness, with great, great manifestation of power. Why he has speak this word? The Holy Ghost fell on all of them. Which adds the word. We want to pray as the man of God will speak the word today. The oppression of the Holy Spirit will be made manifest in our midst. Will be made manifest here today. The Holy Spirit will come down with mighty conviction. The Holy Spirit will come down with mighty manifestation. That no heart will not feel the impact of the ministration of the word. The word will flow. The word will convey. The word will convince. The word will convert. The word will bring people to the Lord. The Spirit of God came down in a mighty way. That the Spirit of God will come down in a mighty way in the service across FCT this morning. He will reprove the word of sin, the oppression of the Holy Spirit. As he comes down this morning, through the ministration of the man of God, he will reprove the word of sin and of righteousness and of judgment that the word of the man of God will not fall to the ground, but mightily, mightily, the word will have its impact we have its influence, we have its stake, we have its transformation, we have its transfiguration, we have an internal work in our life, in our journey to heaven. We will not miss what the Lord has for this morning. And the man of God is the instrument the Lord will use. We pray for him that God will use him mightily that God will have prayed through him mightly. We have gathered before the Lord this morning for this worship service. Why are you here? Why are you here? Will you live the way you have come? Will you go the way you have come? Why are you here? Bring your request before the Lord. Ask the Lord, I need a renewal. Ask the Lord, I need a quickening. Ask the Lord, I need your touch. Ask the Lord that this special privilege we have in the whole of FCT, that the Lord will visit us in a special way, in a unique way, in a great way. Your spiritual life should not remain the same after this service. Your life, every aspect of your life will be taught while you're here. Are you just here to make up the number? Are you just here to just come in the congregation? Why not go to the Lord and say, Lord, I've come before you to have an encounter with you. To have an encounter with you. To have an encounter with you. Bring yourself before the Lord and ask the Lord, to walk mightily in your life. An encounter of transfiguration. The people that went to the mount with the Lord never remained the same. We have come to this place to meet with the Lord and to hear our Father in the Lord declare the word of God to all. What experience are you asking for? Experience of transfiguration. Experience of the thing that happened on the mount. That by the time you are going down, you are going back home with great testimony. 
of spiritual transformation. Great testimony of revival in your spiritual life. Great testimony of the great change. The gospel, the word of God, the spirit of God, the work of Christ does in the life of people that you'll be living here changed. We'll be living here transformed. We'll be living here a new man. We'll be living here a new woman. We'll be living here a new creature. We'll be living here with the work of the Lord done anew in your life. Ask the Lord, I want something definite. I want something spiritual. I want something in my life. This worship service is our Father in the Lord. We never live my spiritual life the same the way I came. Going back better, going back better, going back transformed, going back changed, going back transfigured, going back with a holistic thought in all areas of our life, in all areas of your life. Pray, talk to the Lord, that this day God will help you. These are your petitions, these are your requests, these are your desires, these are the things you want the Lord to do for you, and this morning they will be done, and you are coming here trusting the Lord for his mighty visitation. The Lord has come to visit us, connecting to our great advocate, connecting to our great advocate, and that brings mighty transformation. Your life, your being, your entirety, come before the Lord. Pray. Pray. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. A new chapter. A new era. A new thing. New things the Lord will do in our midst, in our life. Talk to the Lord. New thing. New thing in our spirit. New thing in our soul. New thing. In our faith, new thing, the Lord will help us to draw closer, to come closer, to bring us closer to him as we hear the declaration of the word this morning. Nothing, nothing, the word will accomplish. Nothing, the word will bring to pass in our life. We will never remain the same. We will never remain the same. And let's pray for all our brethren. Some are not here. They are connecting with us in the various region, in some other group. Let's commit the garden to the hand of the Lord that God's power will reach out from here into every nook and cranny of every city. Let's commit the special Sunday worship service into God's hand. Those of us that are here, the presence of the Lord will be mighty. And those that are there in their regions, in their group connected, the presence of the Lord will be mighty. We want God to walk mightily in this LCT combined worship service, connecting with our great advocate. All of us will be connected. The word of the Lord, as is working wonder here, is working wonder there. The word of the Lord, as is transforming life here, is transforming life in all the places that we are connected. God's word will work wonder. God's word will work great thing. God's word will work bring transformation. God's work will bring a regeneration in our life for redemption will be ours this morning. For redemption across the whole of FCT. For redemption as the world comes forth. For redemption as the minister of God, the man of God, preach to, the, preach to us.
teach us the word of God, explain the word of God to us, make us understand the word of God. We want the word, Lord, to live us the way we have come. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Great thing the Lord will do in our spiritual life. Great, great things the Lord will accomplish in our midst this morning. The walking of the world, the wonder of the world, the transformation of the world, the touch of the world. That as we come this morning, renewal will be our portion. As we come this morning, revival will be our portion. As we come this morning, a higher relationship with the Lord will be our portion. As we come this morning, the Lord will so walk in all. We will experience transfiguration. We will experience transfiguration. We will experience the touch of the Almighty God. Let's pray. Let's talk to the Lord. A special combined service, a special worship service, it will be a time of mighty visitation. Mighty visitation upon the church in FCT. Mighty visitation upon the people of God in FCT. Mighty visitation upon all the people who have invited to participate with us in this special combined service. Mighty, mighty thing the Lord will do. Wonderful thing the Lord will do. Things of great transformation the Lord will do. Holistic transformation. Holistic transformation. The impact of the world. The impact of the world will be felt in our life. You will not live here without the world impacting your life. Transforming your life. Changing your life. We won't live here without the world making us better, drawing us closer, better in relationship, better in our spiritual life, better in godliness, better in holiness, better in the things of God. Ask the Lord and say, Lord, my life will not remain the same after the service this morning. We have gathered unto the Lord. And the Lord say, he will speak his word to all, that as his word come forth, no resistance against that word. Nothing in all that will resist the word. Nothing in all that will reject the word. Nothing in all that will go contrary to the word. Rather, a receptive heart, a heart that receive, a heart that will do, a heart that will obey. A heart that is resolved to live by the word of God. A heart that will embrace the entirety of the world. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's talk to the Lord. The state of our heart, very important. The state of our mind, very important. No distraction, no confusion. Nothing that will make us not to concentrate on the world. God will help us. The Lord will help us. Visit us in a mighty way. He has seen our state. He has known our state. And that's why he has come to do greater things in our life. To do glorious things in our life. A work of transformation. A work of redemption. A work of regeneration. A work of God walking in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen of people here for the transforming part of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you for this unique, special service of this Sunday for the whole of FCT. We come before you this morning, Lord. We pray that your power will be made manifest in our life in Jesus' name. We've come with expectant heart, with desires. We are asking, Lord, 
our spiritual life will never remain the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. Across the entire earth city, a new chapter will be opened this morning. A new relationship this morning. You will take us to higher ground in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for we believe you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. A bigger amen. Shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, we worship and praise your mighty name for this bright, blessed day. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for gathering us together to bless us. We give you glory, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Father, we pray you will bless us all abundantly in Jesus' name. Father, we pray you take absolute control of everything, and your name will be exalted. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And amen. We all remain standing as we sing together from gospel hymns and songs, number 39. Gospel hymns and songs, number 39. Will you be free from your burden of sin? There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Will you over evil a victory win? There is wonderful power in the blood. Will you be free from your passion and pride? There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There is power in the blood. Will you be whiter, much whiter than snow? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Since things are lost in its life-giving flow, there is wonderful power in the blood. Will you do service for Jesus, your king? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Will you live daily his praises to sing? There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power. Power. Wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Power. Wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb.
we pray. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Our wonderful Father, we just want to thank you this morning. Thank you because you have brought us here to make us conformable to your image. You brought us here to teach us and to show us the things that are already done and for which you want each and every one of us to be beneficiaries. I pray, Lord, that as we look into your word this morning, enrich our lives. Broaden our knowledge, deepen our experience, glorify yourself in every life. Lord, we pray that at the end of this teaching, make every one of us to become rehearsers of your goodness to every man we meet on the way in Jesus' name. Thank you for hearing. In Jesus' name, we pray. We are welcome this morning to our set the scripture. Last week, in our set the scripture classes, we learned about the identification and cleansing of leprosy. I call on Brother Babatunde. Can you share with us what you learned from that? Okay, it appears. Last week, I learned about identification and the cleansing of Ossi. Uh, we discovered that in the Old Testament, uh, the priest has no power to, they can only identify. But in the New Testament, Christ came, not cast the past, but cleansing them, uh, healing them. We equally, we go out, 
preach to the sinners, bring them unto the Lord. Those that are actually sick, we pray for them, and then we heal them. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. We learned so much last week. We learned about the cleansing of lepers and leprosy in the houses. The need for the house owner to be very cautious and report to the priest, as well as for the priest to do a thorough investigation. And the import of that is that we should not conceal evil or allow evil to fester when we know about it. Today, we are going to lesson 71, titled The Day of Atonement. Can we rehearse this together? The Day of Atonement. Today, God will make everyone who has not had this experience to enjoy the atonement. Our memory verse is from the book of Leviticus. I call on Brother Roland to share the memory verse with us. Brother Roland. I'm so, so sorry I have not memorized it, sir. Okay. Brother Okoro. On that day, shall the priest make atonement for you, and you shall be clean, and you'll be cleansed from all your sins before the Lord. Thank Leviticus you. Leviticus 16, 30. That's a fair trial. Our memory verse is taken from Leviticus chapter 16, verse 30. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. Can we re-echo it together? Brother Okoro, you still stand up, please, and read our text for us. Our text is taken from Leviticus chapter 1, all through to verse, uh, chapter 16, from verse 1 to verse 34. But you read for us, chapter 16, 1 to 6, 17 to 19, 21, and 24. Leviticus chapter 16. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil, before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not, for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen, he shall put on the holy linen, and he shall have a linen breeches upon his flesh. He shall be girded with a linen girdle, and with a linen mitre shall he be attired. These are the holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water. And so put them on. Verse 5. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two keys of the gold for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. And a ram, sorry, and Aaron shall offer his bullock or the sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house. Verse 17. 
and there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make atonement in the holy place until he come out. I have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement for it and shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat and put it upon the horn of the altar round about. And he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and hallow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. Verse 24. And he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place and put on his garments and come forth and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make atonement for himself and for the people. And the fat of the sin offering shall he burn upon the altar. And he... Thank you. God bless you. Here we find the Lord proclaiming and telling Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron about the necessity for the day of atonement. It's important because the scripture says the wages of sin is death. And God is not interested in the death of the sinner. God does not actually want anyone to perish. And as a result of that, it became necessary to institute this particular day. The question is this. Day-to-day -day sacrifices occurred in the land of Israel in those days. Why then was it necessary for God to institute this day of atonement in addition to those daily sacrifices. Brother Atta, if you are there, if you are not, the hands raised up there. Yes. Even though there are days to day sacrifice for the children of Israel, the fact that God will not want any soul to get lost or perish, he still instituted a yearly sacrifice for all the children of Israel, including Aaron and his family, so as to make sure all are toned for. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was appointed to deal with any sin of the people which were not adequately covered by daily or other sacrifices. Moreover, the sin of the entire nation were toned for through the shedding of blood of prescribed animals. We are going to look at three points in this teaching. Number one, precautions for priests in the service of God. Number two, procedures and purpose of the service of the atonement. And number three, pertinent lessons from the service of atonement. Point number one, precautions for priests in the service of God. In Leviticus chapter 16, verse 2, And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place, within the veil, before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Here we find God giving a deliberate instruction unto Aaron. He had been appointed as a priest of the Most High God, yet there is the need for caution. There is the need to do things in a way that will bring glory unto God. Here God is emphasizing the priority of purity in his service. God is emphasizing 
the necessity to do things that would bring him honor. Not only that, we also see here that today, Aaron is no long, longer, but the great privilege of the present day priests uh, saints is that God has made us priests. And the import of that is that every one of us, in whatever area we are serving, we should have an aim. One, to honor God. Two, to do things for God with reverence. Three, to do all things without the praise of self. And if any of this sin is missing, then we see the grievous punishment for perversion. Again, I read here in Leviticus chapter 16, verse 2. It said here that in the middle, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. What the Lord is saying here is that in the process of saying we are serving the Lord, we should not break the rule. It brings the wrath and the judgment of God. Ezekiel chapter 18 and in verse 4 tells us clearly the instruction of God. It tells us there, he said, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sin it, no matter the office, no matter the position, it shall die. And for the priest, his service is very crucial in God's service, especially in the way of actually carrying out this atonement. We go to point number two, procedures and purpose of the service of atonement. We turn again to Leviticus chapter 16, and I read here from verse 3. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a bond offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat. He shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and shall be girded with a linen girdle. And with a linen meter shall he be attired. These are all, these are holy garments. Therefore, shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. As we look at the procedures and the purpose of the service of the atonement, we see, number one, there was need for the high priest to be prepared. And that we have found in that Leviticus chapter 16 from verses 3 to 5. Not only that, we also find out that there are prescribed animals for the sacrifices that we find in Leviticus chapter 16 from verse 6 to 10. Thirdly, we find there are particular objects for atonement. We find number one, the priest himself. He needs to be atoned for in Leviticus chapter 16, verses 11 to 14. Number two, the tabernacle also needed to be atoned for in Leviticus chapter 16, verses 15 to 19. And above all, the people in Leviticus chapter 20 to, uh, to uh, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 20 to verse 28. A brother Yeni is around. Can you briefly outline for us? The procedure of the service of the atonement, Pastor Ayeni. If you are not there, anybody there? Pastor Timothy, come on up here.
praise the Lord. The priest is to first offer for himself, and then they also to sanctify the tabernacle and uh, make atonement for the tabernacle and for the people that uh, are gathered together in the, for the worship. Thank you very much. We find certain things that are unique in this service of atonement. Number one, only the high priest officiated in the sanctuary. Number two, he had to put off his distinguished robe of glory. Number three, he had to put on pure white linen garment like ordinary priests. These three things are very, very significant for the believer today. Only the Lord Jesus Christ is able to cleanse and purify mankind. And for him to do that, he came down and he put on the robe of man. Not only that, he became like ordinary men, subjected himself to all the evil, and yet he made a sacrifice for us. Not only that, we also discover that special sacrifices were made at the uh, service of atonement. Number one, for Aaron and his family, sin offering, and he had to offer a young bullock, burnt offering, and he had to offer a ram. For the children of Israel, also sin offering. Here, two goats were involved, while burnt offering, a ram was involved. For Aaron to embark on the service, number one, he needed to bathe himself, cleanse himself physically, and then present the animals before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle. And then the two goats of the sin offering for the children of Israel, he had, they had to cast lots to determine which of those two goats will be killed and which of them will be sent away as a scapegoat. Number four, the sin offering were made, as we learned earlier, number one, for himself, number two, for the holy place, and after that, for all the people. About the scapegoat, we are made to understand here that Aaron laid his two hands on the head of the scapegoat, confessing all the sins of the children of Israel before sending it away to the wilderness. And for the sacrifices of the burnt offering, like we said, he needs to bathe himself again. Then this time around, he will put on the priest's robe before going to kill the burnt offerings, he will offer the ram for himself and the family and offer a ram for the children of Israel. There are important lessons we must learn here. God expects that these children of Israel during the day of atonement will have an attitude of penitence sobriety, humility, so that they will be able to have pardon and forgiveness of their sins. The question is this, what is the purpose of the atonement? What is the purpose of the atonement? A brother Yeni is there. Can you tell us? What's the purpose of the atonement? If not, anybody, Brother Lawson, can you tell us the purpose of the atonement? The, the purpose of the atonement is for the covering of the sin of the children of Israel so that the, the, the sin, God's judgment will not come upon any of them. So the atonement was to to cover for them. 
the blood of the Lamb. Thank you very much. The purpose of the atonement was actually to reconcile people back unto God and to make sure that whatever evil they have done, the Lord will forgive them if they have the right attitude. Right attitude. Before we go to point number three, what does atonement actually mean? What does it mean? Now, Brother Lawson, you can pick that up. The purpose, of the meaning of atonement is to pay for or cover for the sin committed. When we talk about atonement, we are talking about repair of a damage that has been done. We are talking about restoration of damaged relationship. And we all know that the relationship between God and man was damaged in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3. Therefore, as we talk about atonement, it is reconciliation of God with man through the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us, in Genesis chapter 3, there, verse 15, God saying that the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. Not only that, in Romans chapter 5, verse 11, the Bible tells us what should be the basis of the hope of the believer. It says, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Point number three, pertinent lessons from the service of atonement. Pertinent lesson we learn from the service of atonement. We not recognize the Lord made this day of atonement a day of special Sabbath. Any day it occurred, regardless of the day. That shows the importance. Not only that, we also notice that the offerings were peculiar. Number one, the ram slain represented Christ who died for our sin. Number two, the scapegoat represented the bearing represented the bearing of our sin. And not only that, we find out that also the sprinkling by the mercy seat typifies Jesus entering into heaven with his blood to save us. The day of atonement was instituted. But in the New Testament, we have a better and a sure way. And there are promises, there are profits, there are benefits of Christ's atoning sacrifice for us. It relieves man of the burden of sin. It brings man into close contact with God. It takes away the reproach of evil from the man, from every man. And the Lord is saying that this day can be your own day too. A day to make a part with the Almighty God. A day to have in your heart and believe in your soul what Christ has done. God is calling everyone who has not partaken of what the Lord has provided for us. You can make it your own day. A day of forgiveness. And you must and you should. Rising up going to God in prayer, looking up to Calvary, this day, and confessing your sin, this day, God will forgive you. Rise upon your feet and let us pray. Commit yourself into the hand of the Lord. A day of atonement. Today should be your day to realize what Christ did on Calvary. No need of shedding bloods or bruise and goats. 
talk to the Lord. Father, we just want to thank you this morning. Thank you because of what you did to our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, who atoned for our sin. And we pray, oh Lord, the benefit, the privilege of this atonement will not elude any one of your people in Jesus' name. As we go on now, Lord, continue with us. Thank you for hearing. In Jesus' name we pray. Set you down for the question time and the summary of our study scripture lesson. We've learnt about the day of atonement. And if you have any questions from our lesson, you should please indicate by raising up your hand. If you want to ask any question from what we have learnt, please indicate by raising up your hand. gallery. Can you come closer to the mic? Any the first floor, ground floor? Among the youths, any hand up there? All right, let's have our brother in the first gallery. Good morning, sir. My question is um, concerning the scapegoat. I don't really, I just wanted more light about the scapegoat. Is it that Jesus is the scapegoat or who? I just want to really understand the meaning of the scapegoat and who is that scapegoat. Thank you very much. Brother is asking about the significance of the scapegoat. Who is this scapegoat? We have many metaphors or figure, like the Bible tells us about the Old Testament. The Old Testament is a pattern, it's a shadow, it's a figure of what God intends for us to learn from and also to know what he wants us to do. Let's look at the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9. Let's read together from the book of Hebrews. In the book of Hebrews, reading from chapter 9, verse 1, it says, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. There were things that were established in the Old Testament that were symbols, that were pattern. You see the shadow. There was a worldly sanctuary. It has a ordinances of divine service. Things relating to God, divine, but a worldly sanctuary. Then in verse 10, it says, Those things stood only in the meals and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them 
until the time of reformation. But Christ being come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood you enter in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. We see the dispensation of the Old Testament compared with the New Testament, and what God wants us to learn. And then chapter 10, verse 1, For the Lord having a shadow of things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which, which they offer year by year continually make the commas thereunto perfect. As we are learning about the sacrifices, the lamb, the sin offering, the scapegoat, we need to bear this at the back of our mind. We are coming more specifically to the scapegoat uh, question of our brother. Then if we go to chapter 8 of Hebrews, verse 5, it talks about the fact that those things serve as example. Hebrews 8, verse 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for sea, said he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the man. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by, the, by how much also is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Then we uh, want to be specific now about the issue of the scapegoat. Apart from the goat that was killed in the atonement, and then the one that was set free, you see in the case of the cleansing of lepers that we learned recently or so, we have uh, two turtle doves, one killed, and the other, the other one set free. And we learned about the one sacrifice for the atonement of the sinner. They will have the, sin, the, the, the cleansing of the leper, a sacrifice to bring him back into the fellowship, a sacrifice for sin, and then the, uh, the release of the turtle dove, which was symbolizing freedom. Freedom from the bondage, freedom from sin, freedom from captivity. Now, the, goat, the scapegoat being killed, we have the significance, number one, having to do with the sacrifice Christ made for us to redeem us. He died in our place. He was made an offering for our sin in the book of uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 53. He died in our place. All our iniquities and sin were laid upon him. Then in this freedom, the goat had to be taken outside the camp. And the sacrifice is made and is released. Jesus was taken outside the camp to be sacrificed for us, to die for us, to, and set us free. In the book of Hebrews chapter 13, reading from verse 11. Hebrews 13 verse 11. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. As we have those uh, bodies being born without the camp, we see the sacrifice without the camp and the release of the goat also without the camp. Verse 12, wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gates. That is outside the camp, without the gates, like the sacrifice that was made and also the uh, goat that was set free, the turtle goat that was set free. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the calm, bearing his reproach. We see the symbol of the Old Testament talk, pointing to the sacrifice of Christ on our behalf, the one who suffered for the sin of the guilty, the guiltless suffering for the guilty. And then death was involved. One goat had to be killed. Jesus died on our behalf. Then freedom was also involved, bringing us freedom, release from the captivity, from the bondage of sin and Satan. We have a turtle dove killed, a turtle dove released for the cleansing of the leper, and the leper, the leper symbolizes the sinner. 
Leprosy like a sin. It's a symbol of sin. Leprosy itself is not a sin, but we have it as a symbol of sin. Sacrifice for atonement and then freedom. The scapegoat, one killed, one set free. I mean, sorry, the one goat killed and the scapegoat released. We have death involved. Christ died on our behalf. We have freedom through his death. We are released. We are set free by the death of Christ. The death of Christ was vicarious. It was a, the death of the guiltless dying on behalf of the guilty. And the purpose is to set the guilty free from guilt. The purpose is to atone. It's reparatory, the reparation. It has to do with expiation of our sin. It has to do with the propitiation of our sin. Those are the words, the words that are alternative to atonement, propitiation, expiation. We see all this loaded in what Christ did for us, one sacrifice, once and for all, in all aspects, dying and dying only once. Atonement has to be done and has to be done on a regular basis, once and again, first the priest, then the altar, the tabernacle, the uh, people have to be sacrificed for, to cleanse on a regular basis, on a yearly basis, on an annual basis. But the sacrifice of Christ is once and for all. In Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, we are told, but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. We are the guilty one. Christ came in. He died once and for all. Better sacrifice, better offering, better tabernacle, the one that is made in the heavenly to expiate, to uh, atone for our sins that we may be free and free indeed. A more excellent ministry, a better covenant based upon better promises. And we need to be forever grateful to God for what Christ has done. In him, we have the complete sacrifice. Talk about the symbols of the Old Testament, all the kind of offerings that were made, either with turtle dove, the goat, the scapegoat, and everything. Christ is the full sacrifice for us. He took his sin upon, he, he took our sins upon himself. He made, was made a sin for us. He was sinless, but he became sin for us. The Old Testament dispensation, they had to lay hands on the guiltless goats and confess all the sins of these uh, people on the goats and then sacrifice it, offer it as a symbol. And that's what Christ did. The prophetic, prophetic statement about that in the book of Isaiah 53 and also uh, the New Testament emphasizing to us that it's our Passover lamb, it's our, the lamp of God that take away the sin of the whole world. All our sins were laid upon him and he bore it all to atone for our sin and to bring freedom, to bring uh, deliverance, and to bring sanctification as well, like we've read from the book of Hebrews chapter 13, that he might save us, sanctify us through his own blood. So all we are learning about the Old Testament, everything is pointing to Christ, our atonement, our Passover lamb, our sacrifice, the one that took our place, and the relationship between us and God repaired. There's a reconciliation accomplished through the sacrifice of Christ. So we see the sinner, the guilty sinner on one hand, and we see the guiltless Savior dying on behalf, on behalf of the sinner to atone for our sin and to reconcile us unto God and set us free. If the Son shall set you free, you'll be free indeed. So the killed lamb, the released lamb, and the killed turtle dove, the released turtle dove, the sprinkling of the blood, and all that, everything was pointing to 
the atonement of Christ, the sacrifice he has made, reconciliation of sinners unto God, the offended God, and uh, the, the reunion of the offended God and the offending sinner through the atonement of Christ. That is the message. That is the lesson. I hope it's clear to you, brother. So we've learned this morning about the atonement. And the atonement points to Christ, points to the Savior. What he came to this world to do on our behalf, to bring propitiation, to bring reparation and reconciliation, to reconcile sinners unto God, to break down the middle wall of partition, atone for the sins we have committed, set us free from the bondage and guilt of sin, and help us, empower us, strengthen us to be able to live the holy life after the uh, atonement, after the sacrifice for the sin we have committed, we have the empowerment, the sanctification, the purging, and the, the recreation in Christ to make it possible for us after the atonement, after the salvation, after the redemption, to be able to live the clean, holy, righteous life. That was not possible under the Old Testament dispensation. And that's why they have to continue to repeat the sacrifice. Offer again and again every sin. You have, have sin offering and every year the atonement. Every year the sacrifice. But Christ once and for all. One sacrifice he has perfected all. And if we come in in faith, we receive the appropriation, we receive the propitiation, we receive the sacrifice for our redemption, we are also receiving the power to go and sin no more. We receive the grace to be purged, to be cleansed, to be purified, and to be made holy, to be able to live kingdom life, the holy life, the righteous life. That's why it's called the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. And he has died for the whole world, for the sin of the whole world, but it's not the whole world that is saved or will be saved. It's only those who believe. As many as received him to then give him power to become the sons of God. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe Go preach the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes will be saved. So believing is significant. If you are here this morning, you have not yet believed in Christ. Is the our Passover lamb? Is our sacrifice? Is our atonement? Is our propitiation? Is our redeemer? Is our savior? You need to believe in Him. You need to agree that it's for, for your sake He died. You need to rely on Him, not on your own self righteousness or religious activities. You need to believe, receive, possess what Christ has done for you to be saved. By grace, we are saved. Yes, the grace is available to all, but through faith. Your own faith will bring the grace of God into your life. The grace of God is available to all. God's grace that brings salvation has appeared to all men. But you need to believe in that grace. To be saved. If you are here today, you have not believed, the Lord is calling you to a life of redemption and salvation. Believe, and you will be saved. You cannot be saved by your own good works. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. And after you believe, you receive, then you are empowered. You become a new creature. All things pass away, all things become new. Then you become a his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, as is recorded in the Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. You become his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Good works. We are not saved by good works, but we are saved unto good works. After salvation, good works must follow. And this is what the Lord expects of every one of us. As many of us have, have tasted the atonement of Christ, we have tasted of the redemption of Christ, the salvation of Christ. We have received the grace of God for salvation. There is the need to begin the new life, to live in holy life, in holiness and righteousness, and all the days of our life. That's made possible 
by the atonement of Christ. We, he died for our sins to set us free from all sins, to atone for the sin we have committed and to set us free from the bondage of sin. That's all we, uh, the Old Testament Kanna ordinances were pointing to. And we need to learn from there, come in into it, receive it, appropriate it, and you will be saved, free and free indeed, and you will be fit for heaven at last. That's the will of God for us, for he doesn't want anyone to perish. We're going to rise up and pray. Appreciate what the Lord has done. Thank him for what he has done. Give him glory, give him praise for what he has done. And if you, have, if you are yet to receive this atonement, you are yet to receive what Christ has done, pray, receive now, and this will be yours. The grace of God will be yours. The redemption of God will be yours. The salvation of God will be yours. The power to go and sin no more will be yours. The redemptive power will work in you and for you. You'll be able to live the life God wants you to live, walking in holiness and righteousness, obedient to all the instruction and command of the Lord every day. That's made possible by what Christ has done. You receive, you are saved, you are redeemed. Receive now. Receive now. God loves you. He doesn't want you to perish. If you are here to be saved, receive and be saved. Receive and be free from the bondage of sin. And if you are already free, Pray for the power, the sanctifying power, the sanctifying fire to get all the evil out perpetually to live a clean life, perpetually to live the holy life. Christ took our place. He died in our place. All our sins and guilt were laid upon him to set us free and make us guiltless and make us sinless and make us free from all bondages. Receive. Receive now. God loves you. He doesn't want you to perish. If a backslider, come by to the Savior now. Come now for the Lord loves you. He comes to save. He has come to save that we all might be free from all bondages, free from sin, free from Satan, that we may serve God in holiness all the days of our lives. Serving God in holiness all the days of our lives. Pray and receive. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And amen.